Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of Let's Paint a Mini. So as you can see, looks like we've already got a mini painted. One of the things that we're actually going over today isn't just painting a mini, but also stripping the paint uh, as a tutorial. Uh, I'm going to be going over a little trick here that a, that a buddy of mine, James, taught me a few years ago that I found is uh, pretty helpful for... Um, uh, for stripping minis, uh, stripping the paint off of minis. So what you're gonna need is a uh, uh, little little uh, glass here. It doesn't have to be glass. It can be you know water or or it can be a, you know a plastic cup or whatever. Um, and then you're also gonna need some latex gloves. Um, and then the most important thing, this is the part that actually lets you strip it, is um, pine salt. So what you're gonna do actually is you're gonna basically soak the mini in pine salt. Uh, overnight, it does. It does take overnight. It takes about 24 hours. That's uh, that's the best time to do it. So you basically just take your mini and you'll put it into the uh, little bottom of a glass there. I'm gonna open up my pine saw here, and you're basically just gonna fill up uh, the little glass with enough pine saw to completely submerge the mini. Be careful when you do it. This stuff is um, it's not an acid. I think it's a base. So it can uh, it can cause some some real skin irrit irritation. So don't get it on your hands if you can avoid it. But uh, just fill it all the way up to the top there, at least up uh, enough to completely submerge the mini. Um, and that's it. So you're, like I said, you're gonna sub uh, submerge this mini for about 24 hours. Uh, one of the reasons why you want latex gloves is not only to put the gloves on uh, yourself whenever you. Uh, are rinsing it off, but um, but also to kind of put it over the top of the glass here, um, because the thing about this is that uh, having a uh, an open bottle of uh, pine saw uh, or an open uh, glass full of pine saw is uh, very very pungent. Uh, the smell is is pretty strong. So you know this is just to kind of help make uh, you know uh, the the room that you leave it in uh, not smell uh, really you know. Uh, really awful. So, like I said, you're just going to leave that for about 24 hours. Um, I'm just going to smash cut, basically, to uh, the next part of this whenever I'm done with it. So, I'm going to set this off to the side, um, and I'll see you in a minute, but I'll be doing this uh, myself here uh, probably tomorrow. So, uh, yeah, uh, we'll go from there. Oh, and I neglected to mention uh, that you will need a toothbrush as well. Um, make sure, of course, that it's a toothbrush that you don't plan on actually using for yourself, um, because, uh, you obviously don't want to put a pine salt-soaked toothbrush, uh, into your mouth, even if you, you know, wash it off pretty carefully. You know, obviously, just, just buy a cheap, you know, $1 toothbrush from a store somewhere, something like that. That'll help get the paint off. But, uh, yeah, so just make sure you've got a glass, uh, pine salt, uh, some latex gloves to both like wear for yourself whenever you're washing it off and to put over the uh, the, the glass that you have here uh, and a toothbrush and that's all that you're gonna need but I'll see you in a minute all right so you're just gonna want to make sure to remove the glove from the glass here uh, just do it very carefully you don't want to splash any pine saw uh, around the sink or anywhere you just want to make sure to pour out into the sink uh, again, it's kind of a nasty substance, so try to uh, not get it anywhere. Just kind of be careful. And then you're just going to run some water over it. You're going to take your toothbrush, and you're just going to start scrubbing away. It's, uh, it's going to take a little while. I'm going to kind of speed up here. But yeah, you're just going to scrub, scrub, scrub. That's pretty much it. You can kind of see the, uh, the base color of the plastic there, that sort of tannish brown color start to show up here. But yeah, just keep scrubbing, keep scrubbing. It's going to take a little while. And as you can see right here, we got even further. You can just kind of see the uh, the paint really start to go away. Uh, and just continue scrubbing. That's pretty much it. That's uh, It's it's a pretty simple thing. Um, I will say make sure that after you're done with all this, uh, really rinse off your sink as well because you can see little scraps of paint kind of left over on the sink there. But yeah, just keep going, keep scrubbing. And then after you're all set, you're basically just going to remove the gloves, get it nice and rinsed off. Then you're going to dry them off here with a little towel like this. Really dry them off. And that's it. Okay, and then once you've got most of that down, you can take a little safety pin here and you can just get into the kind of little little nooks and crannies that were hard to get into with the toothbrush. As you can see, there's still a, quite a bit of red here. You can just kind of poke into that with the corners, and it should just come right off.
All right, and then you're pretty much good to go. And then you can just move pretty much right into your uh, right into your uh, base coat of black here. Now, obviously, this is still an imperfect, uh, you know, method of doing it. I mean, it's not like you're going to be uh, really, really getting out every single little detail of paint, but you get pretty much all of the paint off through this uh, through this method here, and. Uh, it's it's a pretty it's a pretty good way to do it. So that's that's what I do every time I never ever need to um, strip the paint off of minis. It's also a lot easier if you're doing pewter minis instead of um, plastic ones. Just something about the uh, the uh, that fabric or, or the uh, the material is much easier to wash off. So after you've got uh, the base coat down there and it's dry, the, first, the next thing that we're going to do is uh, we're going to use this deep red color here. And we're going to cover the entirety of the, uh, the top part of the, uh, of the torso and of the head and all that. Well, my cats are uh, messing stuff up again. Oh, if you can hear it in the background, Riley is playing uh, Lego Harry Potter. Yeah. But I don't think it's going to get too distracting, so I think that'll be fine. Uh, go ahead over the uh, the sort of gums of the teeth here, uh, but try not to cover the actual teeth themselves. But yeah, go ahead and cover the uh, the gums and uh, you know the surrounding area with this with this deep red color. By the way, I didn't say this, but I'm using a larger brush here. This is a 3-0 uh, scale brush. Uh, because being a larger mini, it is going to um, take some time to paint. And I'm probably going to time lapse this video much more so than the others. Because doing this uh, isn't particularly difficult, uh, at least definitely not compared to the smaller minis, but... Um, it just takes a while because it is it just it's just larger. I mean, it's got a larger uh, surface area. Make sure you really get uh, the inside of his neck there, because these are some sort of deep, sort of crevices. Uh, try not to get any paint on the horns as well. Uh, not going to be a huge deal if you get some paint on them, because we are going to go over them with another color later on. But, you know, just for practice sake, uh, try not to get any paint on the horns. So, uh, Riley, you're playing uh, Lego Harry Potter there. Um, what other uh, Lego video games have you played? Uh, all the Star Wars ones, except for... They made one for Rogue One or something like that. Uh, I don't... No, they haven't made one for Rogue One. I know they made one for, uh, The Force Awakens. Oh, yeah, that's what it was. I haven't played those, but all the original ones. So, uh, so like, Lego Star Wars, like, episodes 1 through 3 and 4 through 6? Yarp. Okay. Oh, my God, sorry. Uh, and then... We had the Indiana Jones ones for the Wii. Oh, yeah? Those were kind of fun. I heard the Indiana Jones ones were the first ones to kind of decline in quality a little bit. Yeah. I mean, it was also on the Wii, and we were <laughs> stupid, so I don't know. <laughs> you and your siblings, I assume? Yeah. Okay. Um, I played the Pirates of the Caribbean one. Oh yeah, I forgot about that one. It, I didn't really like that one very much. It was just, I don't know. I felt like the level design wasn't very creative. Okay. And then... Uh... What else? Uh, Lego Lord of the Rings. Which I liked just because it's Lord of the Rings. Oh yeah, because you're just a big Lord of, the Lord of the Rings fan, aren't you? Yes. <laughs> um, that one was cool. I had like a open world... Feel. It was the first one I played that really felt like a true, it almost, it was almost like an RPG, because you could go around and there were like 
quests and shit you could do, and just like extra. And you could walk around the whole world. It was crazy. It was uh, like forever though. Yeah, yeah, I think they started doing that around that time. They did the same thing with uh, Lego Marvel Super Heroes, where there was the main game, which had the, the uh, like, the, the, the individual levels, but then there was a sort of, like, world hub yeah. that was, like, a big open world. And, you know, in Lego Marvel Super Heroes, it was just New York City. And you could just run around New York City and do a bunch of little, like, side quests and side missions and things like that. So that was a similar thing? That's how Lord of the Rings was? Yeah. Like, I remember... The original Star Wars ones where, I mean, you just, you went through doors and there was little levels. Right. Whereas this was, you actually had to walk around to get to where you needed to go. Right. To start the levels. Um, I did play The Hobbit. Uh, now you weren't a big fan of, uh, The Hobbit one, were you? No, but that was probably just because I didn't like the movie either. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of the Hobbit uh, movie. Well, I say movies, but to be fair, I've only seen the first one. I didn't really like it very much, though. I think I saw the first two. And, yeah, I could not bring myself to see the Battle of Five Armies. Because uh, it apparently just went full-blown Michael Bay, just big battle sequences that didn't have any real direction or anything like that. Yeah. Uh, what else? I've played a little bit of Lego Marvel Super Heroes. Mm -hmm. You weren't super wild about it, were you? No, I don't know a lot about Marvel beyond, like, the Avengers and... The movies and all yeah. that. So there was a bunch of people and I'm like, I don't know who you are. So yeah. Okay. Oh, by the way, when you're doing these claws right here... Um, don't, don't be worried about, uh, you know, getting paint on the claws, because that's another one where we're going to go over it later with another color, but, uh, you know, don't be concerned if you get some paint on there. Uh, so you did, um, Lego Hobbit. Um. I think the most recent one besides Harry Potter that I'm playing right now, uh, Uh, Lego Dimensions. Yeah, Lego Dimensions is the one that, that we have that's, um, that's a big deal because you got to have the actual, like, figures for and all that. Yeah, which are cool. Yeah. Uh, what are your overall thoughts about it as a game, though? Um, I like the idea of it. Mm-hmm. And the levels, most of the levels are fun, even if, like, they're not really about character, but necessarily have an interest in. Like, the Simpsons level, I'm not, I don't, I've never really watched the Simpsons, I don't have a problem with them. But the level was still fun. Yeah. But, like, we collected a few, um, sets and levels and stuff outside of the main game, and they're okay, but like, uh, the overworld, it's, they have an overworld for every level, like they have an overworld for DC, and they have an overworld for The Simpsons, they have an overworld for every single thing that you can get, and it's just overwhelming. Like, I could spend fucking years playing the game, and it would be, I don't know, there's just not very much direction after you buy the extra packs. Yeah. And so it, like, some people, I guess, would like to play the game for years, but I don't feel like there's enough direction to kind of keep you focused, and it's just kind of overwhelming. Yeah. Now, the big one that you were into is uh, is Adventure Time, right? Yeah, and I've done a few quests in there, but there's just so much to do and so much that I still can't do because I still don't have enough of the many things to do everything. Yeah. So it's just kind of... That's another thing that I, I would say is a, is, a, is a big criticism of the game, is that um, in order to, like, really 100% it, like, you really, really have to have a lot of figures. Which is what I Which means you need like to, to do when I play the game, because I have, like, OCD and I have to do it. Right. But it means you need to sink a lot of money into it, because those figures aren't cheap. 
Yeah, and even if you don't sink money, because sometimes you can upgrade different vehicles and you don't have to buy completely new minifigs, but that requires like grinding to get enough money. And sometimes you don't just have to have enough studs, you have to have enough um, gold bricks in order to complete the upgrades. Mm. And the only way to do those is by, you know, like getting true wizard, or not true wizard, but like getting 100% of the coins in a level. Mm-hmm. Which they make brutal in these games. Like, do you remember? In dimensions, you mean? Yeah. When we were yeah. Playing, um, I don't know, maybe like five out of the thirty some levels. Yeah. We a hundred percent got all the co- studs. It was fucking ridiculous. Right. And there were like a bunch that we got super close. We just missed it. Um. Oh, by the way. Uh, sorry to interrupt. Um. When you're doing the legs here, um, don't cover or don't paint over um, th- this sort of area right here, because you can kind of see where the uh, the sort of uh, legs are supposed to sort of begin, I guess you could say. Um, so the sort of like insides of his thighs here, um, make sure that you don't get paint onto the uh, onto the pads surrounding them. But yeah, that's a good uh, that's a good point to. Uh, to change, uh, to change paints. But yeah, LEGO Dimensions is cool, but, um, I, I do think that it's kind of annoying, frustrating, that, like, in order to really, really beat it, you have to, you have to sink a lot of time and a lot of money into it. I did like Harry Potter a lot. It's probably my favorite LEGO game that I've played, because they start doing the open world a little more. Yeah. But, I mean, in Harry Potter, there's the castle. So you can just run around the whole castle. Like, there's... It's confined, but still, like, you can go wherever you want. So it's basically, um... It's smaller, but it's more fine-tuned. It's it's yeah. it's kind of deeper, despite the fact that uh, it's not quite as... It, it doesn't have so much big, empty space. Yeah, right, because... With Lord of the Rings, you ran into that, where, like, yeah, it was just running around in the middle of a big field, and it was kind of ridiculous. Tedious. Yeah, it was tedious. But with, uh, like, Harry Potter, it's nice, because you run around and they play the music from the movies, which... Everybody loves John Williams. Yep, I have a lot of emotional attachment to and it's one of the last ones that I played before they started doing um, the actual dialogue oh yeah so there's still just like the goofy Lego grunting and everything and it works with Harry Potter because you know, it's pretty childish anyway right <clears throat> okay so once you've got uh, the chest and all that done he's got a nice deep bloody red kind of look there uh we're gonna move on to the actual layer above that and uh notoriously the barons of hell are actually a um they're kind of a bright pink actually they're they're kind of uh, the same sort of shade of pink as the pinky demons um and to channel that we're gonna be using uh this uh entrail pink color uh this didn't actually come with the um with the set of paints that i have this was actually given to me by a friend of mine a couple years ago matt um, Matt, I don't know if you're watching or not, but, uh, thank you for giving me this. I've actually used it several times, so I, I do really appreciate that. But we're just gonna dab this out onto the, onto our little surface here. And I do always tell people, make sure that you use a plastic surface, not a, uh, not a paper surface. Uh, just because the paper surface is like a paper, or a sheet of paper, or paper towels or something like that. All right, he's much more dry now, so we're going to go ahead and get started on him. Uh, so you'll take your dry brush here, and you're going to get uh, a fair amount of paint onto the brush, but then you're going to wipe it off. Just load up the paint brush, but just make sure that it's nice and dry. Uh, and then we're just going to go over the whole torso. Uh, make sure that when you are doing this dry brush color here, 
Um, try not to get the paint onto the gums that we went on there, but still try to get the jawline. Might be kind of tricky, but uh, you know, just kind of go along the jaw like this, and you should be fine. Don't be super concerned if you get a little bit of paint onto the teeth, because we're going to go over those uh, those teeth later as well. They're nice and big though, so it's not terribly difficult to go over those uh, those details. So once you get, you've got uh, the top torso covered there. That looks pretty good, actually. That looks pretty, uh, looks pretty solid. Pretty much like the actual uh, Baron from the from the video game. There, he looks kind of spooky. Uh, yeah, once you've got that nice and covered, we're gonna move on to the legs. All right, and for the legs, we're actually gonna use this earth brown color as the base. I get a little more paint than that. There we go. All right, I'm going to move on to that, uh, or go back to that same uh, three zero brush that we were using because it's nice and big. So we're going to use that right here. Yeah, as you can see here, his it's almost like his butt has armor on it. So, uh, yeah, just make sure that you uh, go over these little armor plates on here with that same, with that brown color that you were using before, or that you were uh, that you're using for the uh, for the legs. Yeah, I would say the Baron is actually probably the easiest of the minis to paint uh, from the Doom board game. Uh, just because the coloration is really simple. And uh, the details on here are actually really, really deep and they're, they're easy. They're nice and separated from each other. So as long as you're, uh, you're patient uh, and, you're, and you're careful, um, it really is not a terribly difficult mini to paint. Definitely not like the Imp where you kind of need to do some... Uh, um, some color blending and stuff like that down the arms and legs and you know you don't need to worry about the the super high details like the um, like the possessed soldier um, yeah I would definitely say the Baron is probably the easiest to paint but it's also probably one of the most time-consuming just because it does have so much mass um, probably the ones that do take the longest though for sure are the cyber demon um, I don't know if I'll do a video for the cyber demon or not but uh, we'll uh, We'll see what you guys think. Uh, and then the Mancubus, just because the Mancubus uh, does require a little bit more finessing with like the skin and all that, um, the fleshy skin, as well as uh, uh, just the fact that it's very large. It's a large mini. Yeah. All right, and with the hooves down there, um, you can go ahead and get this this color on there. Don't be worried about it. But uh, I'm gonna not paint around the, uh, on the hooves uh, because we're gonna use a lighter shade of brown for that, just to kind of just to kind of give it some variation. You don't want it to look like you know just two colors across the entire mini. But we'll get there. Alright, and once you've got the legs covered up there, 
we're going to move on to the hooves, actually. We're going to um, worry about the dry brushing over the legs in just a second. But for one thing, we want the paint to dry. Uh, but for another thing, we're actually going to be dry brushing over the legs, the same color that we're going to be using as the base coat for the hooves, which is this leather brown color. I do like this color a lot. I use it in a lot of my minis, actually. I just kind of use it all over the place. It's a really good shade of brown. So we'll continue using that brush that I was using. Okay, and while we're doing those hooves, actually, we'll, uh, we'll do these horns up here as well, because we're going to be doing the same color with the horns uh, as we are with the hooves. Okay, tell you what, and while we have that leather brown color out as well, we're going to go ahead and do the, uh, the teeth and the, uh, and the claws there as well, because we're going to be using the, uh, um, the same color for those. Uh, going to move on to, um, going to move on to my, uh, smaller, uh, Reaper Zero Size brush here for this. Um, tell you what, I'm going to start with the teeth, actually, while the paint is still kind of wet, because it's easier to do the small details if the paint is a little bit wet. But you're just going to dab a little tiny bit onto the tip of the brush, and then just really carefully do each tooth. Not very difficult. The, uh, the teeth are pretty, uh, pretty well separated on this mini. It looks like he's got one tooth that's like kind of chipped off. It's just part of the sculpt. I don't think that a piece of the plastic broke off or anything like that, but uh Yeah, that tooth right in front there. Looks like it's kind of broken off. There we go. Got himself some nice chompers there. So now we're just going to go over the tips of these claws here as well. All right, and easy as that. Okay. So now, like I said, we're going to move on to um, uh, dry brushing the actual legs with that color, with that same uh, um, leather brown color. So we're just going to go back to our dry brush, and we're just going to go over the legs. And the best thing about doing it in this order is that when you do dry brush uh, this color over the legs, um, you don't have to worry about, uh, getting any paint onto the hooves, because the hooves are just the same color. That's the, that's the other reason why we, uh, why we do the hooves before, uh, dry brushing this, because it doesn't really matter. I mean, I guess, honestly, it doesn't really matter. I mean, you could do the hooves after dry brushing this or before, it, it uh, really doesn't matter. Tell you what though, I'm going to need to get out some more of that color. Oh shoot, you know, I didn't get, uh, I didn't dry brush pink underneath his thighs uh, that are underneath his butt there. But you know what, to be honest, I think we'll just leave that there. Um, cause, uh, it's not super prolific anyway, so um, honestly we don't need to attract a lot of attention there or anything like that, so we'll just leave that the way it is.
Okay, there we go. That looks pretty good. So that's got, uh, that gives the legs a little bit of some, some depth. And, uh, and we're almost done, actually. So, the next thing that we're gonna do, though, is we're gonna dry brush the horns and the hooves with a lighter color, and we're gonna use fair skin for that. Get some paint out here. Once again, take our dry brush. I think my brush isn't quite dry all the way. You can just kind of wipe the, uh, the paint off onto your pant leg or something like that if you're wearing a pair of pants that you don't really care about. There you go, that's nice and dry. Okay. So we're just gonna really lightly go over the hooves. Don't worry about going over the backs of the hooves because they're so, like, his back heels cover them up so much that honestly it's not, people aren't gonna notice if you're, if you're gonna leave uh, the heels the way they are, so. Just, just worry about the fronts of the hooves. Uh, make sure, though, that you do get these horns up top, though, because these are very, very prominent. Definitely one of the main features of the Mini. There we go, that looks solid. Okay. And the last thing that we're gonna do are those eyes, which, uh, if you look at the, uh, the nice high-res pictures of the, uh, of the Baron, they've got, um, they've actually got glowing green eyes. It's probably to, uh, uh, kind of to represent the, uh, the color fireballs that they throw, because they throw big green glowing fireballs. So we're gonna take this pale green color. Um, you can use a little micro-detailed brush. You know what? I am gonna do that. I'm gonna use my itty bitty tiny Reaper micro detail brush. That's a 30-0 scale. Just gonna poke the tip of the brush into the paint and then just poke each eye. Just make sure that you're really careful about it. These eyes are kind of deep in the mini so it is kind of easy to kind of hit the uh, the rim of the eye so just be careful. There we go. Now oh, he's got some nice eyes. And, uh, and that's it. So the last thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do what I always do with all of my, uh, with all of my minis, especially my big, my, uh, plastic ones, is I'm gonna go over, uh, I'm gonna go over them with this matte varnish right here. It just kind of helps to protect the color and, uh, uh, kind of give it an extra layer of protection as well. Just using a really big, nasty brush for this one. By the way, you can also, if you really want to, you can dry brush the claw tips uh, with that pale color that I was using, that pale skin color, but you don't have to. Honestly, I think that they're small enough that uh, if you've just got a single good enough color over them, that uh, that should honestly work fine for you. Now, I always never take into account that uh, just with this many having more mass, you're just going to need more varnish. So I always pour out the same amount for all of my minis, and I always need to pour out more for the large ones. <laughs> all right, and that's it. I'm going to let them dry for a little bit there. Rinse off my brush. Do make sure that, uh, that you rinse off your brush after using the varnish, because... Uh, if it dries on your paint bristles, it'll really gum up your brush quite a bit. So just make sure that you rinse off your brush really well. But uh, that's it. That's the Baron of Hell from the Doom board game. Uh, 
gonna give a shout out to a death cricket again real quick because uh, he's the guy who um, requested I do the possessed soldier video the last one I did well he also uh, um, asked to uh, to see what I did with a Baron here so this is uh, this one's going out to uh, to mr. death cricket so thank you for requesting that uh, if anybody else has any other um, uh, minis or anything that you'd like me to paint let me know in the comments below whether it's more of the doom board game or uh, if it's uh, Reaper minis or some other kind of uh, miniature that I need to get my hands on let me know in the comments uh, thank you everybody for watching. Bye.